I have met many people with awakened kundalini and I am privileged to have known them very closely and lived with them. I still live with them time to time. Before I step on your next question about awakening of kundalini, I would like to clear some misconceptions about kundalini. First you need to understand what is kundalini and how it works? Kundalini is an energy which stays within you. It does not depend upon the body, it changes its form with every birth of yours depending upon the energy accumulated or drained over births. It represents that particle of God inside you. To put it in simple words, invoking your kundalini simply means invoking the God inside you. Awakening your kundalini means complete enlightenment. Once you are at that stage, there is nothing you can achieve further. You become one with God. It has a complex theoretical system consisting of chakras wheels, nadis vessels, tattvas elements, granthas knots. These chakras represent different states of one's prana. Contrary to common belief, there are actually nine chakras not six or seven. Each of the lower five chakras is associated with an element of basic five elements. There are three knots, namely Brahma knot, Vishnu knot and Rudra knot. In an answer below, someone has given an exercise regime to awaken the first chakra called Muldhara. And the gentleman has said that if one religiously follow that regime for two to three years then his, her Muldhara chakra will get activated. I can't help laughing at it. The first chakra, Muldhara is always activated even in animals forget about humans. It is because of the activation of this chakra that we feel the urge to have sex. I don't know what that rigorous exercise regime has to do with it. You are born with this chakra activated. The struggle starts when you try to open other chakras. If you look at the shape of male, female genitals, they are in the form of a down-facing triangle. When we have sex and ejaculate, the movement of the semen is downwards. It is called, adhagati. When we start retaining that semen along with some other practices then there comes a stage when the movement of the semen goes upwards. This is called, Urdvagati. This Urdvagati is the basic prerequisite to open the other chakras. When one reaches at Vishud chakra and it gets activated, then the salivary gland of that person starts producing and emanating a certain fluid which constantly keeps the practitioner intoxicated. It is an extremely rare phenomenon. This intoxication cannot be described in words. The person who reaches at this stage is called, Paramhansa, remember Ram Krishan Paramhansa. Complete Kundalini awakening or the opening of Sahasra Chakra is the rarest of the rare case. Even the tallest of the saints struggle at this point. Once you start your journey through chakras, you first need to open Brahma Nat or Brahm Granthi. Brahma is the creator, his job is to create. It gets open when you stop to create, when you don't want to create anything, be it a child, be it money, name, fame, house anything. It opens when your desire to create further ends. In other words it happens when you stop creating any more karmas in any form. Second knot is called Vishnu knot, Vishnu Granthi. Vishnu is the caretaker. His job is to retain whatever has been created. This knot gets open when you don't wish to retain whatever you have created. Be it a relationship, a hatred, anything material, just anything. It happens when you let go. It happens when you align yourself with nature and let it take the reins of your life without trying to control the natural course of action. Third knot is called Rudra knot, Rudra Granthi. Rudra holds the poison at his throat. He doesn't let it flow beyond his throat and neither he lets it flow through his head. You open this knot by holding all the poison or the negativity you receive in this world at your throat. You don't let it take over your body or mind. You become still, you become immune to your surroundings. Kundalini awakening is again a process not an incident. You progress with every life, you learn something from every life and you keep on moving towards the creator. It is not necessary that you can open all the chakras in one lifetime. As I said, it's a process. It is quite possible that you reach up to the third chakra in this life and then you move to other chakras in some other life. Whatever you have learned is stored in your prana. Next time you'll start your journey from the point where you had reached last time. Years back, I was doing some sadhana. Then one day during that sadhana, I suddenly felt a jolt and I lost the control of my body completely. 
There was a sudden bombardment of energy in the upper part of my body and it started moving my upper body back and forth. The energy was so strong that I was almost defying the gravity. My movement was somewhere around in the range if 120 to 150 degrees. I remained in that state of 2 to 3 minutes after that. That movement stopped and I could control my body again but that energy took a good 2 to 3 hours to subside. I just couldn't understand what happened. During that time, there came a stage where I felt that if continue to be so then I won't be able to handle this much of energy anymore and my brain will blast. I told my mentor about it, he just smiled and said, your kundalini has just shaken a bit, don't worry it happens. I asked, is it awakening? He laughed and said, not at all, it has just shaken a bit. I again asked, if this is what happens when it only shakes up a bit then what will happen if it awakes? He smiled and said, don't worry, it won't get awake until the time you are not prepared for it, remember, it's your prana only, it is the real you only. And later when I experienced it, I realized how true he was. There are several shops, institutions, foundations selling kundalini awakening experiences at different prices. Every one of them has a different set of exercises, meditation designed to achieve this feat. Every one of them is befooling people in the name of kundalini. In Delhi there is a Mataji who awakens your kundalini in a 3-hour course provided you spend Rs. 2000 for that course. In Rishikesh and Varanasi especially there are hundreds of so-called kundalini yoga institutions who awaken your kundalini if you follow their exercise regime for a hefty price. I cannot understand how will an exercise or a regime of exercises will help you with kundalini when it has almost nothing to do with your body, it has something to do with your prana. It has become such a saleable product that people from far-flung places flock there to get their kundalini awakened for a few thousand rupees. In our consumer-centric society, even the god is available like a two-minute magi noodle pack. I read Kundalini Awakening Experiences on Quora and realized that this word has been so corrupted that when someone who has gone through a Kundalini Awakening course from here and there, gets even a stomach upset symptoms, he, she starts thinking that it is Kundalini Awakening. Same as with enlightenment. People start meditating thinking of a light source and when they see that because they have been thinking about it all the while, they also realize that they have been enlightened. If one's Kundalini gets awakened, he has complete control over the five elements. He knows what has happened, what is happening and what will happen in any part of the world. He can take any form he wishes to have, bet it of a tiger or a butterfly. Laws of known physics are no more applicable to him, her. He, she becomes his, her real self, i.e. the part of God. And the part of God is God only. Tulsidas G once said, Afu deki, aapwe jai, when I see you, I become you.